Hi everyone, this is Yasaf from the Journalist IT. Welcome to my video guide how to install WordPress step by step. This tutorial is part of my WordPress basic series that I use for all of my WordPress courses online. In this series I demonstrate how to install and configure WordPress on some of the most popular hosting platforms. And today, IIS on Windows Server. Okay, so here I have a fresh installation of Windows Server 2008 R2, but following the steps of this tutorial will be just the same for 2012 R2 or even 2016. The first step for installing WordPress on Windows Server and IIS will be to download and install the web platform installer provided by Microsoft. So let's do that. I'm going to open Internet Explorer. Let's go to Google. And here we simply type web platform installer. As you can see, this is the first suggestion. And we simply click on the first link. And click here on the free download button. We'll save it to the desktop. And then click run. It will take only a few seconds for the web platform installer to initialize. And then here at the main screen, we're going to click on applications. And as you can see, this is the first suggestion, the first application that pops up. So we're going to click on add and then install. As you can see, the setup wizard automatically asks for MySQL password. This is because MySQL database is a dependency for WordPress setup. This is what makes this process for installing WordPress so great because the web platform installer does everything for you in a simple wizard step-by-step -step like process okay so I'm gonna keep the passwords very very simple for this tutorial simply capital W non capital W one two three four five six and I'm gonna confirm it again I strongly suggest that in production environments you're gonna use a more difficult password more complex password okay and click continue and here we get a confirmation window we actually see what the wizard what the installer is going to download and install so it's going to download both WordPress and MySQL I'm going to click on accept and now the wizard will enable the features on Windows IIS and download the relevant files from the internet it's gonna take a while so I'm going to fast forward this part and resume as soon as the download and basic setup are completed. So now that all the files have been downloaded and the basic setup has been completed, we need to set up the WordPress site itself. The setup wizard asks for an application name and this basically determines the URL for the website. If you want the website to be set up on a subdirectory, then you need to add an application name here. And as you can see, the URL will be uh, localhost. We'll see later how to change it to your domain name, but it will be localhost forward slash the application name. If you want the site to be uh, set up as the root server, the root site, then you simply need to leave this field empty. And as you can see, we now have HTTP localhost. This is the recommended settings and this is the first site you are setting up on IIS. So we're going to leave it at that and we're going to click continue. Since this is the uh, fresh default setup of the server, we have some leftover files from the basic IIS installation. And uh, the wizard asks us to confirm that we want to overwrite those files with WordPress files. So we're going to click yes. WordPress uses to security tokens and strings to communicate with the server, with the application itself. I strongly recommend that on production environments you're going, you should use long string with some random characters like 32 characters or something like that. But uh, since this is a demo server, it will not be accessible from the internet. I'm simply going to use some short string and I'm going to copy and paste it to all of the security keys. I strongly recommend that if you use this server on production, a uh, real life environment, that you should use dedicated string for each key. 
Okay, let's click continue. And now the web platform installer is actually setting up the WordPress site for us. All we have to do as the setup is complete, all we have to do is click on launch WordPress. And now we get the WordPress setup wizard. It's important to understand that up to, up to this point, we have configured the server to host our WordPress application. And now we are actually setting up WordPress on the server. You need to choose your preferred language. I'm going to stick with English, obviously. Enter site title, call it my demo site. Choose a username and I'm going to choose a password. Now for the purpose of this tutorial, I'm going to choose very simple password. WordPress usually does not allow such weak passwords and I'm going to confirm that I'm going to use such a weak password. But again, uh, on a production system, I strongly recommend that you use a much more complex password, okay? Email is very, very important. Use, on a production system, use an email that you have an access to because if you ever need to reset your password, this is the email address where WordPress is going to send a recent link to. And search engine visibility tells search engines either to crawl your site or not. Again, this, since this is a demo site, I'm going to check this coverage, but for production sites, or real environment sites, keep this check off so search engines will be able to crawl and access your site. Now let's click on install WordPress. I'm going to wait for a few seconds. We now have WordPress installed on Windows Server and IIS. And if I'll click here on the visit site, you can see that the site is actually up and running. There is just one last thing we need to do, and this is to make sure that our website is bind to our domain name. We obviously don't want the server to run on the local host all the time. So in order to do that, we need to open Internet Information Services Manager, or IIS. Let's expand that. And here we have the server name. We're going to expand that as well. And expand sites. And if you remember from the setup process, we had something called default website, which is the first website on our server. We're going to click on that with a right click. And then we're going to choose edit binding. And the default setting, as you can see here, is that the server will answer to every request on port 80. This is uh, very unsecure and not desirable and may also cause some issues in the future. So what we're going to do in order to add our domain name is we're going to click on edit. And here we'll type our domain name, in this case, the generalistit.com. Okay, I'm going to copy that because usually you'll want to have your server also answer www.yourdomainname.com or whatever. So I've added that as well and I let's click on close and the last thing we need to do is to right click that default website website again, manage website and then click restart. We're going to give it a few seconds for the settings to refresh. And now if we return to Internet Explorer, place localhost with our domain name in the address bar and click enter. Our site is live. That's it. We now have WordPress installed on Windows Server with IIS with just a few simple clicks. So that's all for this time. For more tutorials, video guides and free resources, subscribe to my YouTube channel, follow me on Facebook and Twitter, and of course visit my website, thegeneralistit.com. Thanks for watching.